The Nikon Z8 is one of the best full-frame mirrorless cameras on the market here in 2023. 8K video up to 60 frames per second, a 45 megapixel stacked full-frame sensor capable of 20 frames per second. But there are some issues plaguing early adopters, issues that could result in your camera being damaged. Is your camera at risk? Stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It really does help this channel grow, and it also keeps you up to date on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. The Nikon Z8 Facebook group has a warning about a potential problem that could result in a damaged Nikon Z8. Bart Ross said, So today I was out shooting an event with my Nikon Z8. I used Peak Design anchors and strap. The anchor point on the camera broke, and the body fell. And it doesn't turn anymore. Something audible is broken inside the body. But there's no apparent external damage. And that's certainly good news that he didn't destroy his camera, it didn't break. Now, he didn't mention if he dropped it onto concrete from three feet up or dropped it onto a nice soft pillow. But you see, the situation with Bart isn't an isolated one. Ling Boon Kok also reported the same issue with her Nikon Z8. And in that heartbreaking image, you can see it's got the same problem. If you have a Nikon camera, be careful. This thing easily falls apart. The shoulder strap screw easily comes out. And if you haven't commented down below yet, just, just hold off for a moment. I want to be a little bit transparent. Well, I want to be a lot transparent. The whole purpose of this video here isn't to rant and rave about Nikon's quality, because when it comes to manufacturing here in 2023, nobody produces a camera that is 100% without issue. And I'm not here to, to create a flame war down below. If you don't have a Nikon Z8 and you're looking at this going, well, by the grace of God, this could be me. Um, you know, I don't have a Nikon Z8. I wish I did, and I hope to have one very soon. But I do feel bad for my Nikon Z8 customers that are p potentially facing an issue. So the whole purpose of getting this video out there is to remind you, to serve as a warning, to say, hey, look, this is happening to a bunch of users. We don't know which serial numbers it's affecting. We don't know which countries it's affecting. It does appear to be global. So to be careful, inspect the shoulder strap where it screws into the camera and just tug on it a little bit to make sure it's firm. And if you're going to be out shooting, maybe not depend on that shoulder strap right away. And then maybe give a call to Nikon, Nikon Canada, Nikon USA, Nikon UK, wherever you're living in the world. Talk to your local camera store, talk to Nikon, and find out if they're aware of this issue yet. And if so, which cameras are affected and how would you know if your camera is affected? Back several weeks ago when I reported about some Nikon Z8 cameras, not being able to take the lens, the Z lens, attach it to the Z8 and have it to lock into place, I did get a bunch of comments down below saying, talking about Nikon's quality and kind of beating up on Nikon customers. And I really don't want to see that here because, you know, I purchased the Canon EOS R5 three years ago and I love the camera still today, even though the Nikon Z8 has some better capabilities, the camera, the Nikon, the, Nikon, the Canon EOS R5 has served me well and I like it. But I do remember very vividly all the bad press at the time about overheating and it was well served. You could take the Canon EOS R5 and put it in a fridge and it would still overheat. Well, not a fridge, a freezer. EOS HD, Andrew did this test and yeah, at least up until firmware 1.1.1, it didn't take into account the ambient temperature. It was just using some sort of, well, silly formula. And of course, things got better. Things improved with future firmware updates. So I think Nikon with the Z8 is just working out a few issues in their production line. And this is one of the things with early adopters. In technology, we call this the leading edge, but those of us who work in technology day in and day out have a different term for the leading edge, and it's called the bleeding edge, because if you're always on the edge of things, being the first to adopt, to have new technology, you're going to encounter issues. It doesn't matter if you have an iPhone, a Samsung television, a, a Canon camera, a Nikon camera, a car, they're all going to be plagued with issues in those first few models in the first few months. And even for successful models like the Toyota Corolla, a car that's been around for decades, you'll have some model years that are better than others. So I really don't want to see people beating up on others for this. The Nikon Z8 is a very good camera. The Nikon Z8 is a camera that I was going to have in the studio last week, but I had some technical problems and I had to delay it. But I'm looking forward to having my hands on the Nikon Z8. And this video is just there to serve as a purpose, as a warning, to be careful. 
maybe not depend on that shoulder strap until we know just a little bit more. And if you want to stay up to date on this issue, one thing I recommend doing is following me on Twitter because I'm always tweeting out information and, as, and for a subject like this where things can happen rapidly, I'm not going to put out a video for every subtle change, but if I do hear little tidbits, well, throughout the day, throughout the upcoming days and weeks, then I'll go ahead and tweet those out first. But uh, certainly please go ahead and subscribe and uh, choose all notifications because if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors out there, well, this is one of the best ways to do that. And again, for all the minor news and rumors, go ahead and follow me on my Twitter site. And if you're looking for big deals on Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, and Sony right now, <laughs> there are a huge amount of them. I talk about this at the end of every video. Uh, the Canon EOS R5, which is what I'm shooting with right now, it's on sale $500 off at Adorama and B&H. And with that, you also get a free BGR1 battery grip. It's also $500 off here in Canada. I believe in the UK, they've had some recent sales as well. Nikon, not the Z8, it is not on sale. Not with that stack sensor for its current price. I think that's a bargain. But the Nikon Z6 Mark III, Mark II, sorry, Mark II is on sale $300 off. The Nikon Z7 Mark II was on sale, but isn't this week. Up to $700 off various Sony cameras and packages. And the Panasonic S1H, it's also on sale $500 off. And I think all these sales are indicative of what could be happening this fall. Big sales from Canon, big sales from Nikon, big sales from Panasonic. Well, that could only lead to one thing, and I think that is perhaps some new high-end cameras like the S1, the S1H. Seeing both those cameras refreshed or one of them, it's, it's a definite possibility. It's been over four years. Actually, it's about four and a half years now since we got the S1 and four years since we got the S1H. And of course, Sony, the A9, a93 is supposed to be coming out according to Sony Alpha rumors and Canon. We're expecting to get teased at the very least about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, but there is a chance late in the fourth quarter that we could get the announcement with the camera start shipping in the first quarter. But Canon rumors is telling us that no, it's going to be Q1. Well, sorry, not Q1, the first half. And I don't know, I can't see Canon releasing the R5 Mark II right on the heels of the R1. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's all conjecture at this point. All the rumors we're getting on those camera is mostly a CR1, unvalidated from new sources. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week, and we'll see you again soon.